no matter how terrible the situation can get, there's always something good that comes out of it. And I'm a living example of it. My name is Gary Tyler, Louisiana born. Shadow of the poplar tree on fields all ripe with corn. Sixteen years I counted on the rising of the sun. I am just waiting for the boss to take me home. Of all the disunited states, divided black and white. Louisiana taught me how to think and how to fight. Sixty of us kids aboard the number 91. I'm just waiting for the bus to take me home. In the United States, segregation, we're typically talking about racial segregation between people of African descent and um, people of largely European descent. There's so many instances where race, which is a fluid concept, gets distorted or pushed or out of our typical kind of legal definitions of it. When the United States takes over control of Louisiana in 1803, they begin to impose their racial organization. And they say, you're either black or white. If you're black, you have to follow these rules. If you're white, you have to follow these rules. People's civil rights, their ability to exist as a free person and be treated equally are incredibly important things for every person. When that is taken from a person in any way, it causes a visceral reaction. It's very upsetting. In the Plessy versus Ferguson case, at the Supreme Court level, that segregation is legal across the United States. The Supreme Court upholds that law, meaning there's nothing wrong, according to US government and US law, with mandating that whites and blacks use different water fountains, schools, different locations on bus lines, on public transportation. This obviously leads to unfair practices. There's no way that something can be both separate and equal. It was people challenging, it was sit-ins, it was boycotts, and it happened beginning in the 1940s, really. You see a number of court cases desegregating law schools, desegregating medical schools, because it was built on the premise that Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896 was in fact not separate but equal. The Brown v. Board case, named after Brown v. Board of Topeka, Kansas, this is the case that takes the name for all these other cases, goes before the Supreme Court in 1954, and at that point, roughly 60 years later, the U.S. Supreme Court says, we were wrong, that precedent is incorrect, racial segregation is inherently unequal, which means it is no longer legal across the United States. Some scholars call this the lost generation, because when Brown v. Board two came out, this was the injunction that schools must be desegregated with all deliberate speed. Many racist governments took that to mean, well, we'll get around to it when we get around to it. There's scores of instances of cities and states refusing to acknowledge this mandate or act on it. Part of this idea about desegregation is that it came from a place to want to make African-American schools just as good as white majority schools. They made a decision, you know, policymakers, advocates within the black community and educational specialists to put black students from black majority school on school buses and ship them to white schools. Never was it white students who went to majority black schools. 1974, October 7th, there was an incident that happened at a high school called Desran High. And um, and I was I was arrested for uh, originally I was arrested for disturbing the peace. What is so notable about what happened in Destrahan is that this is a group of children. A group of children who are just trying to go to school and you know 200 plus angry people are yelling and screaming and trying to attack the bus that they're on. And the only thing I can remember is that, you know, from there was riots and fights at Destrahan to Timmy got shot. Some of the black kids were being sent home on the bus. They were shot, fired. A young boy was hit, and another person was hit in the arm by the same bullet. I got the call that evening, and it was Timmy's dad again, and said, 
I'm about to make it, bro. A young high school boy was killed. There was some, somebody had to pay for that. Gary Tyler was the person. First search of the bus, as I recall, didn't find the gun. A second search of the bus did find the gun. The bus driver said that during the first search, he didn't see a gun. Uh, he was surprised when they found the gun on the second search. Later, they, 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 they say that they found a weapon after the after bus being moved to the police uh, uh, substation, not at the, and not then at the, not at the scene, and then later come to find out that the that the weapon that they that they claimed and found on the bus was reported from a police fire range uh, right. from another parish. Right, right. You know, yeah, uh, no fingerprint. Oh, right. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, but I was alleged to have passed the gun around the bus and to no all the students and no fingerprints. Yeah. I thought that I would be trial for my life at the time. And I thought that this was something that would eventually clear up itself, <clears throat> knowing that I was innocent of the charge. But unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. And, uh, and I was convicted of first degree murder. After the uh, Timmy Weber shooting, um, the, the most I can remember from that is the community was outraged. And I would say, not at the school, but in the community, in and around the community, and they were angry. That to me really speaks of the power that racism and race holds in our lives, that people are willing to threaten a child in order to protect their own children. Me and my immediate friends didn't give a lot of thought of going to the new high school and that there were gonna be racial tension. There were obvious things that um, were put into place. Uh, we had metal detectors when we entered school every day and I don't even remember how long that went on. Like the old ways of Destrian High, the old school, were left behind. Totally different atmosphere. People still think about it. It's still harbor, I guess, tough feelings about um, the event and the events that were going on in the early 70s. Even a couple of years ago, people were still bringing up racial tension. Well, I got off of that road because, because the United States Supreme Court made the ruling in Stanislaw Roberts' case, mm -hmm. ruling that the death penalty was unconstitutional mm -hmm. at that time. I can make it after 41 and a half years being one of the worst prisons in the nation and being able to make the best out of the worst of the prison, they can as well. He did plead guilty and that was a deal I understand that he made because he just didn't want to spend the rest of his life in jail. He already was late 50, so what I understand is that he pled guilty you know, because it was time to be out. After the move to the new school, racial tensions were, for the most part, left behind. Today, Destrian High School is an A-rated school with a diverse student body that excels in career prep, the arts, and athletics, and has alumni who have succeeded at the college and professional level. While Destrian High School has triumphed following the Timmy Weber tragedy, racial tension is still an issue in some parts of the country. Because our lives are still so largely segregated in terms of school, in church, neighborhoods, we don't know how to have these interracial conversations, which makes progress very challenging. It wasn't that long ago, not only when people were fighting for their civil rights, but the other side of that is it wasn't that long ago that people were keeping civil rights from others. We're not equipped, by and large, to talk about racism. We're not equipped to really listen to a person's experience, take that in and not try to speak over them or not try to justify the racism or sexism that they've encountered. And so the more that people's stories and people's humanity are at the center of history, I think the better off the world will be. History is non-linear. We are not marching always forward towards a better this or a better that. We're not always marching downwards towards a worse this or a worse that. It goes up and down. Things change. People's ideas of what's acceptable socially and what's not acceptable socially changes over time. Each generation has new ideas as to how they want their society to be and what they see as the way forward.